Kia ora, I'm Alana. Thanks for joining me for the third part of this series on using DNA to whakawhanaungatanga, make connections. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, I encourage you to go back and watch them first. Just like in parts one and two, most of this presentation will be in English, but there will be some kupu Māori, Māori words. You'll find a glossary of these words in the handout. Once again, please keep in mind that the information on DNA testing companies' websites is updated frequently and may have changed by the time you're watching these videos. All information presented here was up to date as at December 2020. In part three, I'm going to step through how to find the matches at Ancestry who are most likely to share recent common ancestors with you. I'll also touch on the upsides and downsides of testing at Ancestry and what this company offers. As we saw in parts one and two, as Māori, we may face extra challenges when using our DNA test results to whakawhanaungatanga because of the mismatch between the DNA testing company's expectations about DNA inheritance and the history of Polynesian migration to Aotearoa New Zealand. There are particular challenges if you have one or more Māori great-great-grandparents. One strategy is to focus on the matches who most likely share recent common ancestors with you, but it isn't as simple as starting at the top of your match list. One technique we can use to find these matches is to look for the matches who share long blocks of DNA with us. Essentially, before you can start working out your, how your matches are related to you, you need to go through the default match list you're given and create a custom built list of top matches. So just to recap, the reason why we need to do this is because you're likely to share more DNA with your matches than the DNA companies expect. So instead of having a smallish number of close matches who share lots of DNA with us, we can have hundreds or even thousands of close matches. And while they'll still share lots of DNA with us, most of them won't actually share recent common ancestors with us. Luckily, in parts one and two, we saw that the people who actually do share recent common ancestors won't just share a lot of DNA with us, they'll also share large segments of DNA. So no matter where we test, our first task is to find the matches with whom we share large segments of DNA. If you watched part two, you'll know that to start with, we want to find matches who share at least one segment of 30 centimorgans or more. Once we've done that, we need to look more closely at each of these matches to find the people who also share at least a few other large segments as well. Depending on the DNA testing company, there are different ways to work out this info. These matches will be your priority matches and will go in your custom built list. You can think of these people as the matches who would be at the top of your match list if the match lists were built for people from communities impacted by founder effect and endogamy. Out of all the people who share large amounts of DNA with you, these are the people who are most likely to share recent common ancestors. Of course, you're always free to investigate any of your matches, but we recommend that you start your genealogy research with these people. It will be easier, faster, less frustrating and more rewarding. So no matter where you test, finding matches who share multiple long segments of DNA with you is the key to finding the matches who most li likely share recent common ancestors. Now before you race off to get started, it's also really important to know that this is just one step in this alternative research methodology. At the end of this talk, I've provided an overview of all the steps and in the handout there are links to places where you'll find more information. With that said, let's jump in and see how Ancestry can help us. First off, Ancestry can help because more people have tested there than anywhere else. So you've got a good chance of finding Māori matches who share recent common ancestors with you. Ancestry produces fairly reliable relationship predictions for matches who share recent common ancestors, but they will still be incorrect for the majority of your Māori and other Polynesian matches if you have one or more Māori great-great-grandparents. You will need to test direct with Ancestry if you want to be in their database. The process of finding matches who share long segments is pretty simple, but it's time consuming, because as of right now at least, there is no way to sort your match list by longest segment. So that's an overview. Let's take a look now at the process at Ancestry. We need to start by setting up custom groups. Then we check our list of fourth cousin or closer matches starting at the top of our match list. 
and we sort them into groups based on the length of the longest segment. Whenever we find matches who do have a longer segment of 30 centimorgans or more, we calculate the average segment. To work out whether the match is likely to have other long segments as well. If we find any matches with a longer segment of 30 centimorgans or more and an average segment of 11 centimorgans or more, we put them in their own group. We call this group priority matches. When we're ready to start trying to find out how we're related to our matches, it's the priority matches that you want to start with. Now let's look through the process with a couple of examples. I strongly recommend you start by creating a custom group for all matches who, with whom you share a longer segment of 30 centimorgans, so you can easily find them again. Even better, create several custom groups for different segment lengths, so you can group each match as you go. This is because the process of finding matches who share multiple long segments with you is so time consuming. You really only want to do it once per match. If you haven't created a custom group before, you'll find a link that explains how to do this in the handout. Here's an example showing four custom groups that I created. You can do this however you like, of course, but I've created a group for matches who have a longer segment of 30 or more, plus an average segment of 11 centimorgans or more, and I've called that priority group, priority match group. And then there's a group for matches with a longer segment of more than 30 centimorgans, but they don't necessarily have that good average segment. There's a third group for longest segments between 21 and 29 centimorgans, and a fourth group for matches whose longest segment is 20 centimorgans and under. I've used a number at the start of the group because that will bring these groups into order and at the top of my list of custom groups. And I've given them traffic light colors as a quick visual reminder of which group is which. The numbers in gray show how many matches there are in each group. As you can see, I've grouped about 800 matches. That's over the course of about three years. So every time we have a match that fits in the priority match group, I'd be placing it in there. So how do we find these matches? Well, we start by looking in our match list. Here we have two matches who are both estimated second to third cousins. If we zoom in a bit, we can see the amount of shared DNA shown as a percentage and in centimorgans. The first thing to note is that even though the tester and their matches only share 2% of their DNA, this is actually considered a reasonably high percentage. So on the face of it, both of these matches may share a fairly recent common ancestor with the tester. To find out anything else about these matches, we need to pick one at a time and click on the estimated relationship, which is in blue at the top. When you click on this, you'll get a grey pop-up box for each match. It's going to look like this. We'll just zoom in again so we can see the details. We can still see the percentage and the amount of shared DNA in centimorgans. And we're also given the number of segments that this total is split across. We don't need to worry about the unweighted shared DNA in the middle for now. We can just skip to the last line to find what we're really looking for, the length of the longest segment. Now, that's a bit of a difference between these two matches. If we pause for a moment here, we can see that just as we'd expect, Ancestry has put the match who shares the most DNA with the tester at the top of the match list. However, this match has a longer segment of just 13 centimorgans. We know that matches with a longer segment of more than 30 centimorgans are more likely to share recent common ancestors with us. So straight away, this match this makes the first match pretty dubious. Meanwhile, the second match has a smaller total, 133 centimorgans, but a much bigger longest segment of 54. In reality, we might not bother to have a look at the first match because the longest segment is so short. Let's start with the most promising match, the bottom one, that has a longest segment of 54. Ancestry has told us that we share a total of 133 centimorgans with this match and that this amount is split across five segments. For now, what we've done is shown the whole 133 centimorgans as one big block on chromosome one. Now this is just a pretend chromosome browser because Ancestry doesn't actually give us this information. 
We're just wanting to illustrate the maths. So we know the length of the longest segment and our first step is to subtract that segment from the total. We've left the largest segment on chromosome one, but it could of course be anywhere, we don't actually know. And we've moved the remaining four segments as one block to chromosome two. So we've subtracted 54 from the total of 133. And this gives us 79. So now we also know the length of the block on chromosome two. Unfortunately, that's actually all we know for sure because Ancestry doesn't give us any way to find out the size of any of the four remaining segments. So what now? Well, the best we can do is to split the remaining 79 centimorgan block into four equal pieces. It's not ideal, but it gives us something to work with. And this is what we're going to do in step two. We divide the remaining 79 centimorgan block into four equal pieces. So each piece is 19.75 centimorgan. We don't actually know how long any of these segments are, so we just call this the average segment length. When we're using this method, we really want an average segment length of at least around 11 centimorgans. So 19.75 is a pretty good long average segment. With a longer segment of 54 and an average segment of 19.75, we can be confident that this match shares a recent common ancestor. So they'd be well worth investigating further. And for now, we'd just put them into group one and group two. Now, just as a comparison, let's check the other match. This match shares a bit more DNA with the tester overall, but the total 153 centimorgans is shared across 19 segments. Again, we've just put the whole lot on the first chromosome browser to start with. Sorry, just on the first chromosome to start with. In reality, we might not even bother working out the average segment for this match because the longest segment is so small, but I'm just taking you through it here for practice. So let, like last time, let's first subtract the longest segment from the total and then shift the remaining 18 se segments of DNA in one block to chromosome two. So 153 minus 13 is 140. Now in step two, we divide the remaining 140 centimorgan block by 18. This gives us 7.777, which I've rounded up to eight. Eight centimorgans is very short for an average segment. A short, longer segment and small average segments like this at Ancestry are a good clue that the most recent common ancestor was pretty far back in time. You can be almost certain that the tester in this match do not share a great grandparent or closer. So since we've gone to the trouble of checking the match, we'll label it so we don't need to get needlessly excited about it again. And this match is going to go into group four for matches who have a longer segment, 20 centimorgans and under. Finally, let's compare both of these matches in our pretend chromosome browser. On the left is the data we get from Ancestry and on the right is roughly what it might look like on a chromosome browser. If these are our two top matches, we can see that the second match is the one we should prioritize. And the match which shares more DNA gets demoted. As you can probably see, it's a pretty slow process scrolling through all your matches, clicking on the predicted relationship, doing the maths. But this is what we need to do at Ancestry if we want to find the matches who most likely share recent common ancestors with us. Hopefully in the future, Ancestry will give us the option to sort by longest segment. This would really speed things up. Currently there's no getting around the manual process at Ancestry. So to stop yourself going crazy, I recommend a couple of tips. Only group matches who share at least two segments. Only calculate the average segment for matches with a longer segment of 30 centimorgans or more. Work in batches. Plan to work on a few matches at a time, but complete every step. In other words, once you've clicked on the predicted relationship to view the extra info, check the longest segment, and if it's 30 centimorgans or longer, calculate the average segment then and there before you sign it to a group. That way, you don't have to come back to the match. 
you can filter your match list to only show unviewed matches. So when you do come back, you don't have to scroll through the whole list to find new matches to group. To summarise, matches at Ancestry who share at least one segment of 30 centimorgans or more, plus an average segment of more than 11 centimorgans, once we've removed the longest segment, are the matches most likely to share recent common ancestors with you. Finding these matches is always the first step. Of course, the higher total overall, the better, if the segment lengths meet this criteria. I know there's been a lot to take in over the series, and we've only covered two of the four DNA testing companies. The videos are going to stay up online, so you'll be able to come back and watch them again if you want to. The most important thing to take away from this talk is that segment length matters. I can't 100% guarantee that you'll share a recent common ancestor with all your priority matches. But they are the matches who will most likely share recent common ancestors with you or be the matches that will most likely help you find the recent common ancestors. I'm also not saying ignore the matches who share small segments or smaller totals of DNA or smaller average segments, but it will probably be much more difficult to work out the common ancestors for most of those matches. So we've made it through. We've looked at two of the top four DNA testing companies to see how to find our matches who share the longest segments of DNA. But wait, there is more. We've really only been able to cover step two of this alternative guide and for only two of the DNA testing companies. Future talks will cover these other steps. But briefly, step one involves looking carefully at your DNA at your ethnicity estimate because the higher your percentage of Polynesian DNA, the more your results are likely to be impacted by founder effect and endogamy, and the more closely you will need to follow this alternative guide. Step three is important because as we saw in part one, the standard tools for grouping matches, such as um, Leeds method, if you've heard of that, auto clustering, typically won't work for your Māori or Polynesian matches. Step four is important because DNA test results don't stand alone. We still need to do whakapapa or other traditional genealogy research. Step five will help you with your research, but it's important not to pressure anyone to DNA test. I touched on step six in part two. Testing Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA can be very helpful for sorting out your autosomal matches on different lines, particularly those whose most recent common ancestors are further back in time, beyond the great grandparent level, or for testers or matches who have three or four grandparents who are Māori and may struggle to use autosomal DNA test results to make connections even at the great grandparent or closer level. Lastly, we can all learn so much more from our DNA test results when we collaborate. Once you've done the research that you can, I encourage you to reach out to your matches. If your whānau has surprise matches, I hope they'll be welcomed and supported to connect with their whānau and whakapapa. Also, please feel free to join us at Te Ira Tangata Māori DNA on Facebook if you've already DNA tested, or at Te Ira Tangata Māori DNA Family Tree DNA Project. You might want to join some of the other specialist DNA help Facebook groups as well, or other FTDNA projects. There are links to these in the handout, including for the... Uh, two Polynesian DNA groups on Facebook that you can join even if you haven't DNA tested yet. If you're interested in reading more about the impact of founder effect and endogamy on DNA test results and what other strategies you can try to get the most out of your DNA results, you'll find links on the handout for those as well. Best of luck with your research. Thanks for joining me and thanks also to everyone who contributed both directly and indirectly to this presentation. A special thanks to Rootstech for putting on this amazing event.